name is Katie and I travelled up from Edinburgh. I'm a history teacher in Edinburgh and um, in my spare time I like to do some more history. So um, I've got a women's group, I'm part of a women's group um, who meet once a week in um, central Edinburgh at Toll Cross and our overarching body is called out the Adult Learning Project. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our current project. I'd like to tell you about um, the project that this project led on from, and I'd like to find out, hopefully, by end of it, if people are interested in getting involved. So, in 2018, it will be 200 years since the since Frederick Douglass's birth, and 100 years since some women were given the franchise in Britain. So the legislation was passed in 1917, but I think it went through in 1980. Our project will trace the links. As a history teacher, um, I'll just say that Frederick Douglass, for those of you, can I have a quick raise of hands? Who has heard of Frederick Douglass? Who has heard the name? Not, not everybody there. So Frederick Douglass was, um, was born into slavery in America. And he's the, the biggest, um, African origin abolitionist in the 19th century America. Had uh, conversations with Lincoln, um, the film Lincoln, and um, Frederick Douglass has a, a speaking part. As a teacher, I teach um, the abolition of slavery in the British Empire um, with the slave trade with Wilberforce. Um, and as a teacher, I teach the suffragists, suffragettes to different year groups in a disconnected way, as I imagine a lot of teachers across the country will do. What being part of the Women's History Group has allowed me to do is to have space and time, the opportunity to research and think about the connections between two protest movements, so the abolitionist protest movement and the suffrage, uh, women's suffrage movement, which has really illuminated my own understanding of the connection between the movement and will now hopefully allow me to communicate that to my pupils. But without being part of a, a history group, I don't think I'd have ever made a connection. So I'm not sure if I said this or one of the other members of the group said this when we collected, um, when we had um, a time in the group when we collected why it was important to us to be part of the group. Um, I think they all probably said things that each of us would have agreed with. Um, so we found the group inspiring. We were all interested in current political activism and um, things in the news and it allows us to have a free-flowing um, opportunity to connect history and current events and activism. So it's so, that's something that's really precious to us. It had a crash, so um, that enabled me to attend and um, and other people in my situation. Um, and so that word at the bottom, empowered, I think came up again and again. It was it was empowering for us. It was meaningful for us. Adult Learning Project, um, it's got a specific and maybe unique remit in Britain uh, following the teachings of someone called Paolo Freire, um, who, is, who believes in um, communities being made better and stronger through organising and uh, researching. So it's, it's, a, it's a really special adult education and it doesn't follow Here's your tutor, you turn up with your notepad, they tell you the, the history, you write it down and, and reflect. It's, it's, we decide what we learn about and we all feed in. And that's a couple more thoughts from the group members. So I'd like to tell you a little bit more about um, Frederick Douglass now and um, why we're interested in him. He's the most photographed person in 19th century America. And he came to Scotland as part of a British wide tour. He was still officially, from his owner's point of view, 
a slave when he came. He was on the run. And he came to all the places on the board and he came in 1846. So for any railway enthusiasts, we're at the start of the uh, railway boom and I imagine that he travelled by train to a few of these places. So immediately, if there's anybody who's got a connection with any groups in these places, like to start scribbling or um, collect one of our sheets from the SUP stall on the left at a break. Uh, this is just um, the, the sheet on the board now. So he inspired thousands of Scots on his tour and when he came he was really very much a celebrity. The churches that he spoke at, the, the halls that he spoke at, um, he was a really big name at the time and many people went to see him, men and women. Why did we start to um, research him? I'll just, I'll just say that we're very interested for people to do historical research about, and this is where SUP really encouraged us to um, explore the buildings that he spoke at so that people can really get um, zoom in on, uh, bring to mind the sort of places he'd have spoken at, some of them might not exist anymore. But then we also want to um, build towards a much more creative response to widen the story to get more people uh, to, to enjoy the story and be thrilled by it as we are. Okay, so how did we come to be interested in Frederick Douglass in the first place? Well, we were a women's history group, and, and so one idea um, that we've had is to call it the, call the women's Frederick Douglass because. Um, when he came to Edinburgh, he was hosted by the women that we had been interested and had explored in our previous project. So our current project is the Frederick Douglass project. Our previous project is a project on these four Quaker women in Edinburgh. So they were abolitionist women, um, but they were also, what we found very interesting, is if you look at the abol ladies' abolitionist um, at the Slavery Society in Edinburgh, the names of the people that turned up to the meetings each week or each month are the same names as you then got in the 1870s campaigning for rights for women. So it's the same people. And this for us was fascinating. As I said before, we're all interested in activism and what was really um, special for me is the idea that when you get involved in these things, things lead to other things and people become empowered through one movement and then they can take it to the next movement. So um, what I hadn't realised, because as a teacher I teach, ah uh, yes, you've got the suffragists in the 1870s, 1880s, um, but, but why? Why does it start at that date? And what we found out was, I think, pretty special, which is that women had consciously made a decision that slavery in America was the greater evil and that they were going to put the women's question on the back burner till the slavery question had been resolved. Anybody in the room know that? And through, it was through their campaigning against slavery that they learned the techniques of knocking door to door, of, of speaking in public in the Victorian era. At the start of the period when these women were born, they weren't, uh, women weren't allowed to write these signatures on petitions. In fact, in the campaign against the slave trade, people in the Commons raised objection to the petitions because in Dundee, women and children, they thought women and children could sign the petitions. So our previous project had been um, a sort of a wider lens looking at the links between these women as abolitionists and suffragists. And Frederick Douglass had just been one panel of our exhibition where, um, with Eliza Wigan, on one morning, they had climbed the crags in Edinburgh and carved out, in Frederick Douglass, 
So a very striking 28-year-old African-American and the 28-year-old Eliza Wigan had climbed together the crags and carved out the spade, sent back the money, sent back the, the blood money, the slave money. Um, so we had this amazing story, but that was just one aspect of our previous project. Now we're, we're um, honing in on that. And with the SUP, we, what they've encouraged us to do um, when we've had our um, sessions with them, our training sessions, is to not just make it an Edinburgh project, but look at all the places that he travelled and then ask Scotland what, what impact did he have when he came to your part of Scotland, to your town. So um, if that's where we really are reliant on people getting involved, because um, as a small group um, and, and just doing it for the love of it, I don't think we're going to be able to travel to all these places to uncover what might be there for other people to uncover. So that's where, even if you have a friend who lives in one of those places, um, if you could pass it on, we'd be really grateful. So our group, um, with our previous project with the four Quaker women, what we linked it to was the lack of statues of women in Edinburgh. So um, I should have asked somebody before I started speaking, are there any statues of women in Oban? Are there any statues of people in Oban? Does Oban have statues? <laughs> Edinburgh has 200 statues. Um, of those 200 statues, does anyone want to guess the proportion of women? Go on. It is. Very well done. Um, give you a gold star afterwards. So um, when we were tracing, um, when we were doing our past project, um, we there were two. So there were two hundred statues in Edinburgh. Uh, two of women. One's of Victoria, and two were of dogs. <laughs> now, while we were doing our project, a statue to um, a community worker an activist, Helen Crummy, was unveiled, which was fantastic news. So now we have one more woman than animals. <laughs> but then, Boytek the Bear was unveiled in Edinburgh um, Gardens. Yes, we like Boytek too, but it means that the animals have... And then, we found out that Helen Crummy, her statue was depicted, um, was created with her dog, so it actually means that we are then outnumbered by the animals and also we are parallel with the dogs still. So still three dogs, three women now. Um, there were, there's lots of moments that we could have maybe explored going on from our work with the four Quaker women. Um, but it all still links to the Douglas project. This is a, a painting that's housed by the National Portrait Gallery in London. And uh, if you look very closely, you can see our delegates sent from Edinburgh. Oops. Which is uh, one of the women in the bonnets here. And there's another more prominent woman here. But this is slightly um, misleading because the real fascinating story behind this painting and a story that is far more widely known and credited in America, where they date the birth of American feminism from this moment, is when delegates were sent to the first world anti-slavery conference from all over the world, but the first thing that was debated um, was nothing to do quite with slavery, it was whether the women delegates were allowed to attend. So this is 1840. The decision was made on a vote. I can't remember if the women were allowed to vote. I, I, I suspect not. Um, the decision was made that they were allowed to attend, but they had to sit behind a curtain. So out on the steps of this building, which doesn't exist anymore, the American movement was born because the women decided to sort of do something about it when they got back home. And they had Seneca, the Seneca, Court, Seneca Falls Conference in America. Lucretia Mott, um, Stanton. So, this is a very well-known story in America. I, we just don't feel that this story is well-known at all in Britain. And I certainly don't think that 
the British um, feminist movement dates itself in the same way, even though we were part of the same story. So um, the Quaker aspect is not um, a coincidence. Quaker women were given an education in this period that other women didn't receive. They were given a sense of um, equality um, that other women didn't receive. So there is a common theme and a transatlantic theme because the um, communication networks, again, it's, it's a story of people and women empowering other women um, and other people in the story. And so I hope that really grabbed your attention with this connection that you might have not walked in, but you can walk out now having made, and that it's something you might go home and tell someone else over a dinner party situation. And that's what I do a lot, so um, if I can pass that on. Um, we haven't got any photos or drawings of the events, I've had to do that in cut and paste. Uh, that's a, an excellent book. We, there's um, um, a historian and um, minister Ian White, who's, um, can, if you're in, particularly interested in the moment that Eliza and Frederick Douglass walked up that hill and carved the graffiti into the crags, um, that's a book that I recommend to you because that came out of the uh, split of the Free Church, so, so that might catch somebody's interest. And um, we've linked with the Glasgow Women's Library. We have, um, at our events, got people to draw in our past project what they would like um, to see in terms of the built environment, how it can reflect women's contribution more. We've visited the graves of the women. This is how the whole thing came about because, um, I don't know if you know the comedian Susan Morrison, who um, is the director of the Previously History Festival, and she brought to us this to our attention. She's also a, a comedian and joined the festival at the Pleasants. They used to put the port on these women's graves um, because, uh, because of their location. So um, she knew a bit through the work of Dr. Eric Graham, historian, and then this was brought to our attention and we really tried to follow it all up. Uh, we've reenacted the, um, well, we didn't have a Frederick Douglass. We're hoping to put that right in the future, so um, to get, to add a Frederick Douglass to our escapades, um, but we got a, an Eliza Wigan there. Um, and I just think this, as a teacher, I think this is something that could really um, grab young people's, everyone's imagination, but this, I think, could be just a moment that I think has really um, got a lot of drama to it. Not me, other members of our group scaled Wellington on the commemoration of the death of Davison. Um, we had a wonderful event where we had a big um, tea party and we heard from historians. It's been a really wonderful thing to be involved with this project because it's allowed us to interact with historians, invite historians um, to come and speak and that's just been a pleasure. Um, that's Dr. Eric Graham and this is uh, Jim Walvin who's a historian of slavery, world renowned. So this is, a, he's speaking in November in um, Edinburgh at the University. I really recommend, he's a wonderful speaker. We had an exhibition at, uh, this is a Heritage Lottery funded project. Um, and my pupils were able, um, I asked them what they wanted to do with it. They, um, a lot of them took art as well, so they um, offered to make, recreate the busts because of the statue link of the women. So we've got the pupils having made the three heads there. And the campaign that they wanted to call it was One More Woman in terms of the, the visuals on the streets. Um, we've got members of the public to draw their ideas for statues. And if anybody would like our contact details, then um, you can get them from the leaflet which is on the SUP stall and give it to any feminist friends. 
and people who you think are from Perth, Dundee, Arbroath, Montrose, Eyre, Kilmarnock, Paisley, Greenock, Bonhill, Quake, Gala Shields, Coldstream, Kelso, Edinburgh and Kirkcaldy. Thank you very much.